Hey guys, what's up? This is Steve. Today, let's go through another lead group problem, largest values from labels. Let's take a look at the problem first. We have a set of items. The ith item has value, values i, and labeled labels i, so two arrays. Then we choose a subset S of these items such that S is less than or equal to num wanted. This is another variable, numbers wanted. And then the second condition is that for every label L, the number of items in S, in this subset S, with label L is less than or equal to a fourth variable, or the second variable, the fourth parameter, is less than the use limit, use underscore limit, return the largest possible sum of the subset S. All right. It's kind of, there are too many, um, too many variables in this. Two are for two arrays and the other two are for two variables. So let's take one concrete example to break this down to help us further understand this. For example, let's take a look at, at example one, values. So we are given an array of values which has five distinct values. They are not necessarily distinct, but it just happens in example one, all of them are distinct, just FYI. So the values of this array, the, of the first array is five, four, three, two, one. So they are labels array. You notice the number of elements in both arrays, they are always equal, right? So actually that's one of the notes here. Values of length is always equal to labels of length. And it's within this range. Why? Because it maps to a set of items. This is basically an item. An item has a value, an item has a label. All right, so these are the two first parameters. The third one is numbers wanted, three. That means we only want a total up to three items in the subset S. And use limit, use limit is one. What does this use limit one mean? It means the number of items in S with label L. For example, there are two numbers with label one and two numbers with label two. That means the number with the same label could be applied limit is one. That means we can apply the number with the same label only once. That's the use limit means. That's what this variable means. All right, then the output is nine. Why is nine? Because we want to get the largest possible sum of this subset. So apparently we want to choose since this value is already sorted descendingly. So we want to pick the first one of the same label first. So five, four, they have the same label. Of course, we're going to pick five, which gives us the largest sum, right? And these two, they have the same label. We can pick only one because the use limit is one. So we pick three instead of two. So five plus three is eight. And the last one that we can pick is of label of a different label, label three, which is one. So five plus three plus one, that gives us nine. Total three numbers we used, total three values. And the number wanted is three. So it meets the condition. That's why the output is nine. The subset chosen is the first, third, and fifth item. I hope that makes sense. Okay, kind of similar. Mm, no, not very similar, but uh, the values are still the same. Let's take a look at example two. The values are exactly the same, but labels changed and use limit has changed as well. So the output is different. Let's take a look at why. Labels. So use limit is two that means the same the the numbers with the same label can be used twice okay let's take a look here so there are three numbers with the same label that is three 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 so these three numbers they have the same label and among these three numbers we can pick two of them of course we will always want to pick the maximum the largest we want to sort them in descending order and we always pick the first use limit once which in this case is two. We want to pick the first two, right? Which is four and three. And then number one, we want a total of three numbers. So that is why we pick the, we'll just pick the first three, right? That's why the explanation says first, second, and third item. Five plus four is nine, nine plus three is 12. That's why the output is 12. All right, the same goes as well for example three and example four. So I won't go into details to explain example three and four. As you can see, the rationale is the same. So now let's think about the algorithm to solve this. It's pretty straightforward to me that we want to sort this 2D array just based on the values and in descending order because we want to always take the first use limit number if the same labeled numbers 
and add them up because we want to take the maximum. We want to reach the largest possible sum. And then how do we make sure that we are still within the limit? We don't go above the use limit. So at this point, we can have a hash map. The key of the hash map is just going to be the label. And the value of the hash map is going to be the number, the count of the, same, of the number with the same labels that has been applied. right? And meanwhile, we can have another global variable to, keep, to help us keep track of how many items that we have used already. We want to make sure that the, numbers of the number of items is always less than or equal to 3. When it equals to 3, we'll just break out now and we'll return the final result. I hope that makes sense. If that does, let's get into the actual writing code. Now let's start writing. Uh, let's just put the idea into the actual code. So first, what we want to do is that we can form a 2D array, as I just said, so that it's going to be easier, um, so that the labels is always associated with the value, because this is a one-to-one -one mapping. It's just a, it comes in this format that it's broken down into two arrays, but it actually, it actually should be associated, right? It's a one-to-one -one mapping. So we'll just form this mapping by coming up with a 2D array. So I'll just call it temple, um, new int, and this is going, let me have another variable called int n values length. All right, since we'll be referring to this variable multiple times. And the, the, uh, the, the number of rows or the, or the length of this matrix is going to be n, and the number of columns is just going to be 2, because we only have two elements in this, um, in this 2D array, right? In, in each row of the 2D array. So now let's form this. The first one is going to be values. And the second one is going to be labels. Now we have formed this 2D array. We have associated values with labels. Now what we want to do is we want to sort this array in descending order just by values, because we want to take the largest ones first out, right? Because we want to form the largest possible sum of the subset S. All right, now let's sort this tuple A and B. We want to use, we want to sort in descending order. Oops. In descending order. So we'll do it this way. Oops. B minus A, right? And the first one, the first item in this 2D array, in each row of the 2D array is the value. So we want to sort this 2D array by its value in descending order. All right, that's what it means. Next, what we want to do is that we want to initialize a hash map. Again, okay, what does this hash map do? It's going to help us keep track of the number of the, the number of the number of the same label that has been applied to the final sum. Right? We want to make sure that the number of the same label that has been applied to this final sum is always smaller than or at max equal to use limit. That's what this map does. Hash map while we try to form the largest sum. Then another variable I just call it sum and return sum in the end. So now let's just go through this. So first, I'll just use a variable called val. We'll just get this. And then we want to check. I'll have another variable just called used count. Uh, or maybe used times. That means the number, the number of the same label that has been applied to the sum. How many times? That's going to be map get all default. Notice this one is going to be the key of this map. As I said in the beginning, it's going to be the label of this value, right? So that's going to be tuple i1, right? Default is zero. That means this the number of this label has never been applied to the sum yet. So we want to get the default value is going to be zero. Then we want to check if use times is greater than or equal to use limit. If that is the case, that means we have already exhausted the quota for the number of this label already. That means we can just continue. 
Otherwise, that means it's safe to still use the number of this label to apply it to the sun, right? So we, so what we will do is we'll just uh, apply this. We'll add this sum to the total sum to the total uh, sum. We'll add the value to this total sum, and then we'll update the count. So map put tuple i one, and we'll use used times plus one, right? And then also we want another variable called a uh, uh, number uh, numbers. I'll just call it numbers starting from zero. This is the global variable that helps us to keep track of how many items that we have already used that we have added to the sum, right? So in here we need to update. We need to increment these numbers by one. And then we also want to check. As soon as numbers is greater than or equal to num wanted, then we can just break. Right? At this point, we can just break. We should get the final result correct back. Now, let me run the code. Accepted. Cool. Now, let me hit submit and see. All right, accepted. Uh, runtime is 85%, 28%. Let me hit uh, submit code again one more time. Uh, didn't improve too much. Not super impressed. I guess it's, well, it's <laughs> slowly improving. All right, this is the entire code. It doesn't change too much in terms of time and space complexity. Uh, but yeah, here's the way that I think is very straightforward to help people understand this. If you think this video is helpful to help you understand this problem or how to apply different data structure or algorithms into solving actual code, please do me a favor and gently tap the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel as I have accumulated quite a lot of different lead code, data structure, algorithm, or Amazon Web Services cloud computing videos on my channel. Feel free to check them out. So hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds in my other videos. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one.